So I hear our TOC members and patients tell me all the time that doctors are telling patients about risks about HRT that we know are no longer true based on updated research. Risks like estradiol causes breast cancer. Things like women over 60 can't start HRT. Things like HRT can't build bone. These things are not true. And I hear them propagated over and over and over again. Now, recently, I heard a less common one, and I want to discuss this one today because this one was personal. So my wife actually went to her OBGYN, and her doctor was talking to her about the upcoming menopause transition. And she said that when the time comes, you're going to have to make a difficult decision on whether or not to use HRT because estrogen increases your risk of stroke. Now, we were out on a walk, <laughs> walking the dogs, and I'll admit, I was furious. In fact, I think my head just about exploded because yeah, I hear this all the time from our patients, from our TOC members, but to hear it coming from my own wife, who is very sensitive to recommendations from doctors, this is going to impact her decision-making around hormones. Despite the fact that she hears me talk about hormones, she hears me talk about these things all the time. So... What's interesting about this particular situation is that I know this doctor. I think she's actually a great OBGYN. So my question is, how could she get this so wrong? How can she be miseducating her patients when she seems to be so on top of things outside of this particular topic? Or am I wrong? Is there actually a use case with estradiol where there is an increased risk of stroke and maybe I've missed it? So I went down the rabbit hole of how a doctor would educate themselves in this situation to see if I could figure out how she could be so fooled. And this is going to blow your mind. So if you've ever suspected that your doctor may be wrong about something, especially HRT, you're going to want to watch this video because the way that you research and ask these questions and the specific tools that you use to answer these questions will absolutely make a difference even if you know how to read the literature, even if you're an MD, even if you've gone through a residency and a fellowship and you've done the research on hormones yourself, like all of us have to because we are taught these things in residency. Now, if you're just worried about the stroke risk with HRT, then you're going to want to watch this too because we're going to dig into what the recommendations say, what AI says, what the guidelines say, and what the research really shows. So regarding stroke risk and HRT, I wanted to try to follow what I would think her approach would be. Now, clearly I wasn't there. I'm glad I wasn't there, but I wasn't there. I didn't ask her how she learned this, but I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I'm a practicing physician, what tools would I use? Cause I am, and I do, what tools would I use to educate myself on the topic of say estradiol risk and stroke? Now, there are some specific sites that doctors go to. If you're a research guru, you like to read the papers themselves, you go straight to PubMed and you can search in your search criteria and it will spit back to you papers based off of your search criteria. And that's great. And that is a good way to do research. However, it takes a lot of time. So I don't actually know very many doctors who will take time out of their day, go to PubMed and just research a topic. That's not an efficient way to do it. Now, journals, if you if you are, let's say, an OBGYN, you have certain journals that you're going to be subscribed to and you're going to get those journals. And again, you could potentially read through them, but also challenging. There's really not enough time to do that in practice. You're probably going to pick some and then not read the rest. So not going to go down the journal pathway. So here's where doctors are actually getting their information. If it's not just reading guidelines, it's from these sites like UpToDate, Dynamed, and now AI tools like Open Evidence. Now, what I figured out when I started looking at these things, because I have access to all of them, all of the major summary tools looked similar. But the AI tool is the newest, it's the coolest, and I think doctors are flooding this way because it really does make it easier and faster to do research on topics that you want to be updated on. So I want to show this one to you, and I want to show you how careful you have to be, even if you know how to read research, especially in the space of HRT. So here is a screenshot from Open Evidence, and you can see the, the simple prompt, right? I just typed in topical estradiol and stroke risk. Now you can get very detailed in these prompts, but I just wanted to see if you just did blanket topical estradiol stroke risk, what would come up? I also talk about research in HRT, and you have to be very careful with what your prompts are, even if you're looking at, you know, in PubMed or whatever, because I specifically said topical estradiol. I didn't say HRT. I didn't just use estradiol because that would mean oral as well. These are going to give you different results, right? If you're including progestins, not including progestins. And so this is what I said, topical estradiol, 
risk of stroke. Now, if you look at what this says, I'm going to read it. It says topical estradiol is associated with an increased risk of stroke. Well, you could just stop right there and walk away, right? Okay, but here's the thing. It says this risk has been observed with estrogen alone therapy, including transdermal and topical formulations as reported in the drug labels for Eva Mist, Estrogel, and Elastrin. The risk of stroke was quantified in the Women's Health Initiative, estrogen-only substudy, which found a statistically significant increase in stroke incidence in women ages 50 to 79, receiving daily conjugated estrogens compared to placebo. This increased risk was evident within the first year in persistent throughout treatment. Okay, so let's stop right there. Now, there was actually an FDA hearing last week that was really fantastic. And if you haven't listened to it, you should go listen to it. Fantastic panel of experts telling the FDA why these drug labels are damaging, why they are hurting women. And this is another great example. So even open evidence gets this wrong, right? It says, well, topical estradiol because estrogel is topical. Estrogel carries the same label as all other estrogen products, including vaginal, that says that there is an increased risk of stroke with use. Here's the thing. The Women's Health Initiative, you've probably heard me talk about it. The Women's Health Initiative did not use topical estradiol. The Women's Health Initiative used oral conjugated equine estrogen, Premarin. That's an oral estrogen. It has very little estradiol in it, and it does carry a different risk profile. So how could this be so confused? So let's go on and look at the second part of this, because this is actually where the, there's a lot of interest. Again, I'm going to read this so that you can see that this is, uh, this is not just me summarizing it in the way that my bias would do it. So it says literally expanding beyond drug label data, multiple large observational studies and clinical guidelines have specifically addressed the risk of stroke with topical transdermal estradiol. The American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association state that transdermal estradiol is not associated with an increased risk risk of stroke, it's standard, less than 50 micrograms per day doses. In contrast, oral estrogen, which consistently shows an elevated risk. This is supported by several large nested case control and cohort studies, which found that low-dose transdermal estradiol does not increase stroke risk compared to non-use, while higher dose may increase risk, a risk ratio of up to 1.89. That's almost a 90% increase in risk for the record. So, oh man, so what does this mean? Um, this means we need to look at the data. So if you go to the, the third image here, you can see that these are the, this is why open evidence is so cool. It gives you the, the citations, right? So now we can go and actually look at these and we can say, you know, if we want to dig in, we can say, gosh, that can't be right. I want to learn more um, or I just want to learn more. But here's the thing. So for my wife's OBGYN, would she take this next step? Because it seems pretty clear that estradiol causes an increased risk of stroke, right? So here. This is where this is really frustrating because if you think about how busy doctors are, they don't have time built in to do research. They're doing research on their own free time, right? They're educating themselves on their own free time and we're all busy, right? So how can we expect her to go in and do the research on these specific studies, these specific discussions that have been peer reviewed and published? So the thing I really want to dig into here is the second part of this, where it talks about it being dose related, because this would be really important because in our recommendations, we're saying we, we, we want to move beyond the idea that we're just using hormones for symptom management. Yes, that's what it's FDA approved for. But if we look at this from an optimization perspective, from an anti-aging longevity perspective, we can see the benefits for bone. We can see the benefits for your heart. We can see the benefits for your brain. It's very, very clear. So if we want to use it for these things, we need to use the dose that is going to be most impactful based off the biomarkers for these things. And that's usually, I would say, 90% of the time, going to be more than a 25 microgram dose, which is essentially what they're saying, less than 50 micrograms per day as a patch. So then let's get into the data. Of the cited publications, there's actually only two that are published articles. One is a review and the other is an actual clinical trial. So let's pull the trial. So the goal of the trial was to look at stroke risk in postmenopausal women using hormone replacement therapy, comparing oral and transdermal routes. So this is cool, right? So this will separate out people taking oral estradiol versus transdermal estradiol. Now, this was a large study. It had nearly 900,000 women aged 50 to 79 from the UK, and they tracked them for almost 20 years, actually over 20 years. So this is a good design, but it had one major flaw, and I'll discuss that shortly. What they found is that women currently using oral HRT had a 28% increased risk of stroke. Uh -huh. 
Now, this was compared to women not using HRT, which is the way you want to do it, and the risk was present with both low and high doses of oral estrogen, and the risk actually went up as the dose went higher. So this is a big deal. It also went up for long-term users. Yikes, that's also a big deal. So that would be bad if we used oral estrogen, but we don't. So here's where it gets interesting. What they say about transdermal HRT is that estrogen delivered through the skin did not have an increased risk of stroke overall. But remember they said something about it being dose dependent. So what they showed in this study is that women using low dose patches, 25, 50 micrograms per day, had no significant increased risk in stroke, but high dose patches, 75, 100 micrograms per day, those were associated with a higher risk, actually nearly double of that of non-users. So yikes, this is potentially a big deal, right? But here's the thing. This is the limitation that we have to be careful of in, in HRT research. They did not separate out people taking micronized progesterone from women taking progestins. They included all of the progestogens, which is both of those groups, they included all of them together. So we don't know, were people taking progestins or were they taking micronized progesterone? We do know that HRT with progestins consistently show an increased risk of stroke in the literature, even with transdermal estradiol. We also know that oral estradiol and progestins will increase your risk of stroke as well. But that's not what we're talking about here. Remember that oral micronized progesterone is not a synthetic progestin. It is as bioidentical as you can get. You take it orally and it is broken down like you would break down naturally produced endogenous progesterone, as opposed to the progestins, which not only have an impact on progesterone receptors, but also have an impact on estrogen receptors, androgen receptors, and more. And that's why they can have varying impact on different mechanisms within the body. Now, I want to give you more on this because I don't just want to stop here and say, well, they didn't study this, so they can't say that that's true. I think that's a valid argument, but I also want to show you why if you do study it, you do not see this risk. Before I get there, though, just know that this is one of the five things that we talk about in our masterclass. If you haven't been to our masterclass and you're on a bone health journey, please consider coming to our free masterclass. During this class, we talk about the top five mistakes we see. For people that are on their bone health journey, we see thousands and thousands of women and men on this journey. And I can tell you, I see the same things over and over and over again. So let me time collapse your journey by showing you these five things absolutely for free. Check out the link in the description on YouTube or go to our website at osteocollective.com. All right, so I pulled the second study because this is a study that does a much better job on the progestin side. Now it's smaller, but better designed to help us answer the critical question of does HRT with bioidentical micronized progesterone and topical bioidentical estradiol increase the stroke risk? So researchers analyzed 3,000 cases of ischemic stroke specifically in women aged 51 to 62. They used a national health insurance uh, data plan, which there's some weaknesses to this design, but it gives you really good information about health outcomes like stroke. And then the big question is, does the route of estrogen, does the type of progestogen affect the stroke risk? And here's what they found. Women using oral estrogen, again, had a 58% higher risk of ischemic stroke compared to non-users. Women using transdermal estrogen, no increased risk at all. Now, from a progestogen perspective, this study did show something unique. It separated different types of progestogens and the differences were dramatic. Again, micronized progesterone, no increased risk of stroke. Progestins, which they actually did a good job of even subdividing the progestins, yes, there was an increased risk of stroke as high as 100%. Now, they also looked at estrogen dose, and again, the risk with oral estrogen went up as the dose went up. For transdermal estrogen, the dose didn't seem to matter. No increased risk, even at higher doses. So what does that even mean? It confirms that oral estrogen may increase the risk of stroke, especially at higher doses, especially over time. But transdermal estrogen appears to be much safer, even at higher doses. And finally, we have real world data showing that not all progestogens are created equal. The safety profile is different between micronized progesterone and progestins. So according to this study, what is the safest combination specific to stroke? Transdermal estradiol plus oral micronized progesterone. And guess what? That's what we recommend. Now, I did add actually one more study because this is a study I've read before. I put it in my book, and this is from the Danish National Cohort. So the Danish National Cohort study followed nearly a million women 
ages 51 to 70, over a 15-year period. And they looked at prescription records with hospital diagnosis. And this is a country that has really good record keeping, unlike in the U.S., where we, we don't do a great job of collecting side effects and connecting health outcomes like stroke to prescriptions. That's not true in this country. This is why this study is so powerful. So they looked at these um, hospital diagnoses and evaluated stroke risk across different hormone therapy regimens because, again, they know what everybody's taking. And this is what they found. Again, oral hormone therapy across the board was associated with an increased risk of ischemic stroke. Continuous combined oral estrogen with progestin therapy had the highest risk. Again, oral therapy, progestin. Highest relative risk, 1.36, 36% increased risk compared to non-users or never users of hormones. And the risk went up as the doses of oral estrogen went up and the use of progestins. Now, they did point out that if you did stick with lower oral doses, that actually the risk was not significant. And maybe that's a reason why some doctors will use low-dose oral estradiol. It doesn't seem to carry that same risk, but is it actually doing the thing we want it to do? In contrast, though, transdermal estrogen therapy showed no increased risk, and in some formulations even actually suggested a protective effect. Say that again. In some formulations, suggested a protective effect. Transdermal unopposed estradiol had a statistically significant relative risk of 0.82. That's actually protective, right? That is an 18% relative risk protection from stroke. But when you looked at transdermal combined therapies, this would be with micronized progesterone, that protection was right around neutral. Now, the confidence interval of that previous comment, that 18% protection, nearly crossed one. So if the question, is that really real? But it is not leaning in the other direction, and that's the important piece. Now, what's interesting here, and they talked about this in the FDA hearing that I mentioned, vaginal estrogen came out as a clear winner in terms of safety, and it actually supported a 35% reduced risk of stroke across all subtypes. But remember, that black box warning that estradiol or estrogen causes cancer is on vaginal estrogen products too. Okay, so where does that leave us? Well, when it comes to my wife's OBGYN, do I see how she could have been misled by an, even an AI interpretation of the research? Absolutely, right? You read that and your answer coming away from that, whatever you know, 10 minutes that you took to do that research is topical estrogen causes an increased risk of stroke. I get it. So it's easy for me to explain how she could have figured that out that way. But the impact is not lost on me, right? I saw the fear in my wife's eyes as she was having this conversation with me around estradiol and the risk of stroke, and that she's questioning whether or not she should use HRT when the time comes because the, her doctor told her and planted this seed that it causes an increased risk of stroke. It is so damaging. These mistruths are so damaging on so many women. So what we have to remember with the research around HRT is that the risks are lumped together. You saw this clearly in this FDA hearing where like expert after expert said, pointed out very clearly, the black box warning of estrogen increasing the risk of stroke on even vaginal products is harming, literally harming millions of women because they're afraid to take it or their partners tell them not to take it because they're concerned about their health, because they think that it's going to cause an increased risk of stroke and the evidence does not support it. So, so clear for vaginal estradiol. Also clear, in my opinion, on topical estradiol in the form of patches or creams or gels. When you pair it with micronized progesterone, you do not see that risk in the literature. All right, so I think we drove this home. I hope that helps clear up this concern around HRT and stroke risk. Again, topical estradiol, oral micronized progesterone, it's the safest combination and it is effective for the vast majority of women who try it. So that's it. You can tell how passionate I am about this. I get really upset when I have these conversations. So deep breath and remember that life should be about honoring your health, making memories and aging with strength and grace. I'll see you in the next video.